Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone deck spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we'll be taking a look at Jelenio Wati's Budget Overload Shaman. Uh, Overload Shaman is a deck that cropped up, I believe, at the end of uh, the Boomsday era, and was a really fun deck I, I really enjoyed playing. Uh, I think it kind of attacks the, uh, the metagame on a little bit of a different angle, um, and particularly with the fall of Shutterwalk, I think a lot of people were looking towards uh, kind of Overload Shaman as being kind of a new uh, upper tier Shaman deck. Uh, it comes to us, of course, from Jelenio Wati, one of my favorite people. Uh, definitely go check them out on Twitch and on YouTube, making some of the best content out there. Uh, but this is a nice budget version, so we don't have any legendaries or anything like that. We do have one epic, and that is Doomhammer, I think. Or two epics, I guess, to the two Doomhammers. Uh, but I think this is a really important card for the deck. It is from Classic, so a lot of you longer time budget players might have a couple of these sitting around. Uh, but it combines very well with Rockbiter Weapon as a way to uh, get our opponent dead from quite a high life total. You know, Doomhammer over the course of those 8 attacks does represent 16 damage, and as soon as we combine a Rockbiter Weapon in there, it's all of a sudden representing, you know, 22 or above, um, which is really good. Outside of that, we've got a lot of uh, kind of overload themed cards. Firstly, the cards that do actually overload us, we have Zap. Lightning Bolt, which is great for going face and killing your opponent, just like uh, a Lava Burst. I think we'll rely quite a lot on these Lava Burst Lightning Bolts to be the reach to, to kill our opponent. But we've also got uh, Voltaic Burst, which is an excellent way to get back on board, combines very well with Flame Tongue Totem, um, and some Feral Spirit in here as well to help build our board out, make sure that we're contesting the board early. Um, now, the one exciting card that I, I am really excited to play with. I've never played with Lickum before. It's a 2 mana 1 3 weapon. It has plus 2 attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. As you can see we do have quite a lot of overload uh, crystals in here and Lickum can kind of help us uh, you know if we do play Lickum on turn 2 into turn 3 Feral Spirit uh, it's going to help us on that turn 4 when we are overloaded as we can help contest the board and I think Lickum is going to be really good in this situation but like I said haven't played with it before so we'll reserve judgment until uh, after we finish playing the games. Uh, we do have Spell Zerker in here as a, uh, a really interesting um, Really interesting 2-drop, good body, if it does get damaged you can potentially you know, start firing off some 7 damage lava bursts, some 4 damage zaps, that's really good, and some 5 damage lightning bolts, so we might be able to get a little bit of extra damage in here. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one, maybe it would be better if we're just playing a straight up, you know, uh, plus spell damage minion like the Kobold, or you know, if we were doing a non-budget version of course, the uh, Blood Mage Thalnos, things like that. Um, the last really, really, really cool card in here, there's a lot of cool cards in this deck, is Spirit of the Frog. Um, this is the Spirit for Shaman. It's 3 mana, 0, 3 stealth for a turn. And whenever you cast a spell, draw a spell from your deck that costs one more. And I was initially a bit skeptical of this, but I think it actually is a really good late game plan because it allows us to draw a lot of our reach spells. You know, you can, you, obviously it's the ideal scenario, but you can imagine landing a frog, you know, you hit a zap on something, you get a lightning bolt from the deck, you can lightning bolt your opponent's face, drawing a rock biter weapon from your deck, rock biter weapon yourself, draw a lava burst from the deck, lava burst your opponent's face, can really help us kind of get some um, some of those resources back into our hand and hopefully get our opponent dead. So I'm really going to be keeping an eye on Spirit of the Frog. Um, and the only unfortunate card that we can't play here that I would definitely love to see is uh, Thunderhead. Obviously there's another epic and Jelenio Wati is keeping this to a nice budget. So unfortunately we can't play it, but this card is uh, sick and it's one of the better cards in the Overload Shaman archetype, in my personal opinion. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we'll jump into some games and we'll see how good Jelenio Wati's Budget Overload Shaman really is. For Doomhammer. Okay, up against the Warlock with uh, this Overload Shaman. Definitely going to keep the Firefly. Uh, do we keep the Feral Spirit? It is one of our better turn 3 plays. I think we will. Just because we're so likely to draw some potentially awkward cards like, like Lightning Bolt. Um, I think, uh, I think keeping the Feral Spirit was, uh, Job done. was okay. Unfortunately, we didn't hit any of our really good, uh, 
tempo cards like Earthen Might, Flame Tongue Totem. There's no bloodlust in this deck either. Ooh, double healing totem is uh, not great. But fingers crossed our opponent uh, thinks that this is the kind of deck that would play Bloodlust and does actually uh, try and take down some of these, some of these minions. Because this uh, lives through uh, lives through Hellfire. No bloodlust is a crime against shaman. I uh, I'd like to see one bloodlust in here. I think at the very least. I I think that unfortunately with the like spirit of the frog stuff going on, you, there might just might not be enough room. Hmm. Hmm, is it possible we should have traded in here? No. I mean, I mean, if they had the Hellfire here and they didn't play it last turn, that's like a, oof, it's like a three billion IQ play. We only want to hit this twice. So these Voltaic Bursts are a little bit awkward. Job done. Come on, it's the little elemental that could. Hopefully I don't have a Siphon Soul here. Seems likely. Opponent is just on what seems like hand lock, control lock, something like that. I'm very biased oh, towards oh Bloodlust. I can, I mean, Bloodlust is a great card. I think no shame in being biased towards Bloodlust. Is this the Hellfire? No, Stegodon. All right, I guess we got to get a Doom Hammer down now. Start doing a whack. Elements guide me. Elements guide me. I was thinking about uh, going for the totem instead of the the firefly, but if we roll the one one, it's totally reasonable that our opponent's holding a defile. And if we roll the one one, then I, we lose a lot. Might go for the voltaic burst here to take down the mountain giant. Would really love a uh, Spirit of the Frog off the top. Hmm. What? 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 Huh? Where are you going? What are you doing? What's that? Is that an Iron Beak Owl or something? This will be a Mmm. I see. It's a lot of weapons. Just gonna go for 
think. Uh, we'll hold this flame elemental. If our opponent does have the hellfire or something, rather not lose this or uh, twisting nether. Uh, 20 is a lot to uh, attack through. Ah, uh, regrets. Pretty scared of a Void Lord. Pretty scared of a Void Lord. This deck doesn't have a hex in it. And that was kind of one of the reasons I really liked playing that Overload Shaman, is it had two hexes in it. The hex really uh, answered a lot of the kind of problematic decks. Ooh, nice spell I mean, our opponent? Oh, Ooh. Me. They did have the Defile. Uh, it was the leftmost card, so... We did okay. Oh, please leave that spell damage to us. No, not today. Yes! Elements guide me! Elements guide me! Alright, so what kills our opponent off the top? Lightning Bolt, Earthen Might, Flame Tongue, if they don't kill our whole board, Rock Biter Weapon, Lava Burst. Oh, is this Dark Pact? Oh, yuck. Thinking about they're thinking, thinking about the flame tongue totem. Yeah. Taunt. Hmm. I guess theoretically last turn we should have played Lickham because we could have uh, attacked with Lickham then played the Doomhammer and gotten 5 damage instead of 4 but uh, pretty dead here well played. GG's to our opponent, really close one and our opponent did have quite a lot of healing which definitely helped them uh, and Q block definitely turns the corner a bit faster than a regular control lock but uh, well played to our opponent it's a pretty tight one but you can kind of see uh, definitely some uh, upsides to playing uh, this Overload Shaman. Okay, here we are up against the Hunter. We do have Voltaic Burst Earthen Might and the Unbound Elemental. I think we can keep all of these. Ideally, we draw into a Firefly. So don't really want a Voltaic Burst on turn one. Ugh. But against the Hunter, maybe we can uh, gear up an Unbound Elemental if it's Beast Hunter. Spell Hunter, we might be in uh, Struggle City. Come on. Play a Spring Paw. Play a Jewel Decoy. Don't play a Diamond. Greetings, traveler. Ugh. Greetings. Greetings Alright, let's hope that they don't have uh, the hatchet. Okay, no wind fury. Okay, that's fine. I can coin out this earthen might. Wow, 
That's not a good elemental. What's the best case scenario here? Our opponent just trades and hero powers. We play the unbound elemental and they don't have a... Uh, I don't know. I mean, flanking strike doesn't kill it. Well, we'll kill it if it's assisted by a spray. Okay, though, this matches up okay against the Razor Maw. Opponent's getting a little bit low on cards. Spirit of the Frog. I mean, admittedly, Spirit of the Frogging on turn 4 as our opponent's about to go into their flanking strike turn. Not the worst. Our opponent doesn't deal with his unbound elemental though. They are probably going to be in for a, an unfun time given we can Spirit of the Frog and Lightning Bolt. Pick up a bit more value. Especially when our opponent's kind of... Uh, Hasn't been trading the best on resources. Also, if we can resolve a Doom Hammer, oh wow, kill command. If we could resolve a, a Doom Hammer at a high life total, it's um we can use it to trade for a bit. Lick em. So we could go for like Lickem Lightning Bolt attack. Clear the board, take one. Or we could go for Spirit of the Frog, Lightning Bolt, leaving a beast on board. They don't have Houndmaster, right? Houndmaster was a great play last turn. Um, I'm going to go for the Spirit of the Frog, mostly because I want to see how, how it goes, how it works. You know, if we can resolve a... Uh, a feral spirit. If our opponent doesn't have a Rexar, we uh, we could be in for a good time. Hmm. Really hoping that our opponent's hand is. I have oh. Okay, hybrid. I was not expecting that. Um, yikes. Big yikes. I wonder. What do we do about this? Subject 9. Very good card. See if our opponent has like a Houndmaster here. Although, Hybrid Hunter, I wouldn't imagine, runs a Houndmaster. There might not be enough room if you're playing Subject 9. Alright. Opponent has their uh, Christmas tree set up. Uh, 
Uh, things are going to get real difficult next turn, hey? Well, let's just hope they have have the spell stones. They don't have the Rexar. Because if they have the Rexar as well as the spell stones, we ain't getting through this one unscathed. They do have the rest, though. No, or it's explosive trap. That's true. So I think we'll trade here and then send... Uh... No, we're... let's not send any dogs in. Well, we're going to go for the assumption they don't have Rexar, but they do have Explosive Trap. Do want to zap that, though. I really hope they don't have rat. Play snipe? I don't think we've played a minion in a bit. Play this volatile elemental into the snipe. Kind of want to get a weapon down though, but I guess we could go vile plume. We could play the harbinger. like we're pretty dead here. Dead to kill command, dead to Leroy. And they have used one kill command already though. Raise more. Dead to plus attack, dead to wind fury. Yep. Well Opponent got us. There you go, so Unfortunately, we weren't able to kind of outvalue. We weren't able to outcompete them on the board, and also outvalue a uh, a subject nine or anything like that. So, unfortunate. Let's uh, take a look at the the deck. Uh, ultimately, I think I really enjoyed this deck. Uh, well, let's take a look. I think I enjoyed it. I think there's a lot of things to like. Uh, I think, unfortunately, maybe the budget side of things is a little bit too. Um, Mm, not weak, but you do miss out on a lot by playing a budget version. You know, we miss out on Thunderhead. You know, we're not playing any, like, interesting Storm Chaser packages with, like, you know, a Bloodlust and a Stormbringer or something like that. Um, you know, we didn't get to see how good Spell Zerker was, but uh, I think that... Uh, I think that I do want to play a couple more games with this deck and figure things out. 
So, um, yeah, we, we might be back with another video sometime on this uh, budget overload deck. Uh, regardless, big shout outs to Jelani Owati for sharing it. Uh, all the links are in the description if you are watching on YouTube, of course, please go check them out. Uh, all of my links are in the description as well, including a link over to Twitter. That's the best place to catch me, at Tommy underscore wave. But until next time, stay safe, stay wavy, and uh, yeah, overload some mana crystals. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that video. Check out other ones over here, or come subscribe to the wave pool for more excellent times.